Hello everyone and welcome to We Hate Pink interview series. Today we have with us Lara Albania. Uh, she's a STEM expert and I'm really happy to have Lara with us because he's the first STEM expert that we have uh, at this interview series. So Lara, I leave um, everything to you so you can introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your role and where you come from professionally. Okay, so thank you to everybody and I'm really happy and grateful for you to be here and listen to me. Um, yeah, I'm an expert, but it depends. I want to explain to you where is my business, but in particular my heart, because uh, I want to speak to you about STEM, my loving STEM and my being in science. Mm -hmm. um, today is a, a quite a strange day for me because um, it's, um, I received a news from a friend of mine. Uh, she is fighting with, uh, against breast cancer mm -hmm. and every day and every time I listen and I um, be in touch with this type of concerns I think again why it's so important for uh, the world that uh, everybody who wants to be in STEM could be in STEM. And uh, right now we know that uh, more or less half of brains that uh, could be helpful for innovation, for being in uh, higher science, higher engineering, um, uh, math or technology could not be in them for a lot of little problems for other that uh, probably we are going to speak um, in the next uh, minutes but uh, yes i uh, come from um, university in particular academia and the biotechnology field i um, have the phd and postdoc i work with the cells so life science more in general and what you um, know that for example, G, um, GMP and uh, um, everything that is connected to um, engineering, uh, tissue engineering, or something you cut and stick uh, in another way with DNA and so on. So um, I'm very close to life science and, and to science um, in particular because I really believe that uh, you can help other people uh, and the world and this was my first uh, goal when I was younger and the reason the main reason to be in this field but uh, you know when you uh, go and your age uh, grows uh, you who have different paths so you uh, cross different uh, roads and so um, right now I'm not working only with the S of STEM, mm. but uh, also with the M, with the T, with the E, that means mathematics, uh, technology, and engineering, and uh, more in general, my figure of biotechnologies is uh, um, the borderline figure um, at the edge of all these uh, technological fields. So uh, I'm quite happy to um, work to be involved, uh, to be interested in um, all the aspects. That uh, uh, don't mean uh, I discard arts, um, languages, uh, or history, or other subjects. This is uh, very important for um, our discussion in STEM. It means that my uh, heart, my love, is for in particular these uh, topics and uh, um, why uh, I'm an, more, um, an expert uh, because I find in my career but also in the um, experiences of uh, other friends and colleagues mm -hmm. that there is a great um, job mismatch between what you want and what you are um, uh, learn from academia and uh, what is the real world, the job world, in particular from uh, those people that came from uh, research. And so I decided to uh, try to help 
uh, this mismatch uh, to be overcome and uh, to solve. <laughs> it's quite difficult, I know, but try to put, you know, my little stone to solve this problem. And so I cross different projects about uh, human um, resources and uh, in my local area for helping people with the uh, job research, in particular, um, all uh, the fields that are concerned to STEM. Because in, I don't know if you know that um, people, in particular girls in STEM, um, are not so uh, represented. And uh, so there are a lot of studies for try to understand in which way of your life uh, this start to happen. And I start to work with many projects for uh, helping girls and in particular young girls mm -hmm. uh, at the age of uh, high school or less mm -hmm. uh, to try to face with this problem, with this uh, reality is that is not so common, you know, because the job is uh, uh, quite far from your ideas when you are uh, 13 or 14 yeah. years old. And uh, so I collaborated also with the Neuro Academy of Science uh, mm -hmm. in doing this uh, um, awareness for international um, projects and international uh, people. And, and now I'm trying to um, help um, in different ways, also in the didactics at high school, so introducing this uh, subjects uh, with the European Commission projects and so on. Amazing, so that is a quite um, a very um, complex, interesting uh, introduction and curriculum. So my question will be, the first question that I, I would like to ask you is, what does being a woman in STEM means to you? Uh, uh, maybe I also uh, answer to this um, question, but for me, it means uh, loving STEM subjects, first of all, because I really believe uh, that uh, um, you need to love what you are doing, uh, in particular in this complex world, uh, which uh, speaking about uh, job employment, uh, job employment and career for a girl is not so easy. Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, loving STEM, but of course, if you are working with STEM, so with in science or technology, or um, that doesn't mean you are um, an engineer or you are. Um, and mathematical or physicist, but it also means that you are in the communication department of uh, CERN, for example. Mm -hmm. I have a, a friend of mine that works with STEM because uh, she needs to know that she is a physicist, but she is in the communication part. So I'm come back to my first point uh, that uh, all the subjects are very connected. Um, is an holistic vision of uh, nature, first of all, of science and of the world, because we are, um, yeah, we have learned um, to um, discard some subjects and to keep with us on the other one, but uh, this is not the real uh, vision that you need to have for the world. Yeah, what you want to do, of course. You were talking about uh, your project that is giving to uh, young women and girls in particular the opportunity to understand what they want to do in that life uh, and early on understand if they're actually interested in STEM. Um, do you feel that you have, I mean, that girls and women uh, in general, have equal opportunities to men in this environment, in STEM? Uh, it's a complex question, of course. No, it, it, <laughs> probably we are not fix in one question in this interview. I'm aware of that, but obviously I'd like to know your opinion. 
Yeah, uh, sure. I, I think that uh, for be uh, really rigorous and serious, you need to incorporate the different subjects. That means the different fields and jobs, career. Um, for example, if you are speaking about um, ICT, so uh, informatic information technology. Um, there are a uh, great interest in uh, people and in particular in girls because there are no girls at all and the companies need and are recruiting this gap. And so the problem is uh, uh, try to uh, conduct and help the young girl to um, go to, uh, and take these particular studies. Uh, on the opposite, uh, in science, uh, in life science, in biology, uh, there is uh, another problem because uh, um, there is a less demand of the job career in terms uh, of numbers. So how many people are in the, at the university and how many people uh, want to have a job uh, at a university. So it is not so easy. There, uh, there is, you know, uh, a fight, a strong fighting, uh, and of course, uh, girls and the young women have some problems. Uh, and with this term, I mean, uh, uh, all you know, um, first of all, because uh, maybe you want uh, to have a family because of biology, that means uh, birth in the future and so on. In other words, if you don't have uh, um, any contact uh, with uh, your life, not only with your job, uh, it's okay because uh, you are completely similar to, to a man. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for men, but I mean that they don't um, think about, oh, I want to have a baby, it could be a problem. I mean, they um, can have a baby and this could really not be a problem for them, for their career in terms of time, in terms of being in the lab, at the bench, yeah. for example, in you know, research and so on, in terms of contract. Mm. And so, on. so, yeah, you need to distinguish. Um, I also think that uh, probably there is, uh, uh, th there are some uh, bells that uh, are ringing right now. So, um, uh, some cluster in our society that uh, are thinking about this problem and are facing and try to overcome this problem too, because they believe they really believe in person i think this is the key word mm. if you think about others as person before uh, their gender before their nationality and so on you are thinking about um, what this type of person uh, can give to you Actually, in terms yeah. of competence skills mm. and so um, all the other things can be managed in other words, you are um, you have fear about them because of all the problems that they are dealing with them. This is uh, the problem. Yeah, and I think it's probably that the main point that you highlight is so important because sometimes, um, especially when we are talking about science or technology, there are so many stereotypes. So the fact that you can actually rely and talking about people uh, going over the cultural background, the gender, and even the age, because sometimes yeah. like it's, it's also like that, it's sometimes like a lot of stereotypes around age, especially mm, these days around technology, tech and innovation, because I usually believe that innovation comes just from a younger, uh, people, uh, so it's a lot. It's, it's a lot there. Uh, yeah. We've been talking about a lot, and so I think the main point and what we actually realize in this, we are realizing this conversation, and it's something that it came out also in the news lately, is that we need to encourage girls to uh, be more exposed and more interested in STEM. So, how you do that with your project? Yeah. Um... I found that uh, um, 
the most important problem right now is not um, communication or information. No. We are full, uh, students, young people are full of information. Uh, the real problem is um, help them to manage this information and to manage uh, their feelings. In yeah. other words, uh, I think the best um, word that uh, I would also uh, to uh, remind, uh, remind me yeah, sometimes is awareness. Aber awareness about you, uh, about uh, your feelings. Try to uh, focus about your skills. And um, it is not easy for um, young people uh, for the problem that I previously uh, exposed because uh, uh, they are only thinking about school, about friends, mm. not about their selves in the future. Or most of people are not doing that, of course. Um, but you are full of opportunity. And uh, uh, for example, when I was younger, <laughs> uh, we uh, don't have at all. It was uh, really impossible to be connected with uh, the opposite part of the world and to have a lot of information to find mentors people mm. different from your parents or your teacher mm. or your friends i mean uh, people that are really engaged in these topics for their career or for because uh, they are ex experts and uh, they really can help you in uh, human resource mm. field and so on. So um, some advices uh, can be um, be interested in everything around you. Um, uh, don't care only of being a perfect girl. This is a great problem because uh, boys can be, you know, lazy, uh, can do everything, but a girl uh, should be perfect, yeah. doing everything perfect. And this is uh, um, uh, something that can uh, distinguish between a career or uh, a career in STEM or not. I mean, um, please don't have a negative judgment about yourself. For example, uh, you are not useless. You have a brain that is uh, perfect as all the other brains, all the other people in the world. Maybe you are you have passions that is quite different. Uh, it means what you want, what you love, not your hard skills. Your uh, like a, a laptop. Um, yeah, or like a robot. So, yeah, like, yeah. You know, but yourself, like someone that needs to be necessarily perfect to do everything. And like, if you don't tick all the boxes, you cannot access to that career. And that is a little bit something that all women uh, are facing in different phases of that life with that kind of imposter syndrome that convinces us that what you can have in different parts of your career, even when you become really senior sometimes you can still have to battling the, the imposter syndrome. And that is something that, and also like talking about women in STEM, there is an, an important topic that we have been discussing in our previous call, Ara, which is like um, how challenging is for mom being in this environment. Um, and that is where my next question is gonna be about. Um, so what do you think is the biggest challenge moms are facing in your field uh, i don't <laughs> want to be uh, so crude but i think it's to be alone um, that means alone uh, in facing society uh, facing um, job environment or also family organization it is not only about black or white yeah, uh, pay attention. Of course, I, I know a lot of um, father uh, that wants to be real fathers, but they uh, cannot do that because uh, of their companies or uh, because the, the general, you know, social system. So uh, I think that we need to start thinking about uh, um, familiar 
caring, not only a mom caring about um, children and so on. And again, this completely doesn't mean that uh, mom are not interested in their babies. Um, I speak uh, about uh, uh, a quality time. Uh, this this uh, is really different between a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, a time of quality mm -hmm. is what you have because you want, because you are um, uh, happy in doing that and stay with your babies. But it's really different in doing that only because you have to. You have to really for years. Yeah. Yeah, quite so. And I this think, is guys, is the frustration that a lot of women are facing, not just in STEM, in every single industry, like every career women, because uh, I think it's this, again, we are coming back to stereotypes that we expecting mom to work as if they're not having kids at home, and we're expecting them to be at the same time full-time mom as if they're not working. So we're expecting from them a lot in both kind of areas and sometimes it's impossible. And then this can create frustration also because we give to mom this high responsibility that the education of kids is like almost depending on them. While it's not like that, like you said, is a more a family dimension and is a responsibility of both parents to obviously come like, collaborating the education of the kids so um obviously your experience is valuable and i think what you are doing is like mentoring a lot of girls constantly so so you are in a way like talking every day with really i mean not every day but you have a project that you are doing with young women but what advice would you give to your younger self then Oh, awareness if you can and try to obtain it so about your skills as I mentioned about yourself uh, who you are um, uh, what is your role for the future maybe in the next five years not so far along and not be lazy um search for good mentors uh, i think it, this is really important use all the instruments all the technology you have not for chatterboxing <laughs> nothing more with your friends but um care about uh, your future your jobs because uh, uh, quite often there are no people and no place that is really waiting for you, but you need to write your future and you, sometimes you need to fight or to be prepared in deciding what is your dimension in difficulties. That is it's really, it's really interesting because sometimes that is actually the advice that I would love to to give to my to my younger self because I mean when you start your career you don't really know exactly what to do and you think that it's somewhere out there someone is going to give you an opportunity well most of the time you have to create your own opportunity and you have to create your own the situation that can help you to create an opportunity um, so this is bring me to the end of this interview and I want to thank you for your time, uh, your, uh, not just your time, but also your advice and everything that you are share with, that you share with us today. Um, so I hope to meet you obviously face to face once this is going to be over, hopefully in Italy. And uh, in the meantime, I thank you again for, for your time today. Thank you to everybody, to you in particular, but to, to all the women uh, in the world. And it's uh, really a pleasure again uh, trying to help you in my <laughs> little places and with my few words. 
uh, quality view of somebody and if um, someone wants to write me to be in contact uh, it's a pleasure because my really great goal is to help this work in some way starting from the local um, with the international collaboration now we are Susana, so yeah Definitely. Thank so you. we'll add also in the, at the end of the interview uh, and in the post when I'm going um, all the details about you with your email address and if people want to get in contact with you to ask you some question about how to build the future. Uh, so um, I will I will share your your details in uh, in my article and at the top of this interview and on the bottom in the comment. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone, to be with us today. And I hope to see you at the next We8Pink interview. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.